So I want you all to imagine the following scenario. You're in a grocery store doing shopping and you need to get strawberries. Now, you're walking down the aisles um, trying to find the fruit section and when you finally do, you discover it has two options. The first is a sturdy cardboard box with a single word printed on top, strawberries. There's no other info. You can't look into the box and you have no idea if these are the strawberries that you're looking for. The second option is a transparent plastic box with some handy labels on it. So you know immediately what the nutritional value is, where the strawberries are grown, and you even get a cute little recipe to make strawberry pie. And you can see exactly how the strawberries look like. So which of these two options would you choose? Now, of course, choosing what strawberries to buy isn't quite the same as choosing what company to work at. But in the same way, we need to think about how we expose and promote our teams as places that people want to choose. So not doing anything at all and remaining that black box doesn't really help at all. So despite having the word hiring in the title of the talk, I'm not actually talking about the hiring process at all. I want to talk about the things outside of, the, outside of that process that might make it easier. How can we make our companies those strawberries that people want to choose? So I work for a company called FutureLearn, and we're basically a social learning platform. So we partner with universities and cultural institutions to offer free online courses. So if you were here yesterday, you would have heard Joel's talk about how we tell stories with our Git commits. And in the same way, I'll be talking, in a way, what I'll be talking about today is how we tell the stories of our team. So for the past two years, I've taken a lead within FutureLearn to do exactly this type of stuff. So I've been responsible for trying to raise awareness about our company within the tech and design community. And in the past, I've always struggled trying to explain what it exactly is that I do. And it's been really tricky to find that single phrase or word or title that kind of encompasses it all. And I think the closest existing roles are these. So developer evangelism, evangelism developer relations, developer advocacy, outreach. And these are all terms that are used within our industry um, for these roles that are very much outward facing. And initially I thought, you know, maybe this is what I do. But kind of examining it more closely and actually doing this stuff for the past two years, I realized while there is some overlap between the activities, the goal and the intent behind it is really different. So the way I see it, this area normally is about creating a relationship between your company and potential customers. You have a product, be it a platform, APIs, tooling, it's something that you want developers to use. It's all about shaping that space so that you can have conversations with those outside of the company about your product. And that wasn't quite what we were trying to do here. So the phrase that I've started using recently to capture what I do is employee evangelism. So in the same way that developer evangelism is about creating that conversation between your company and potential users, employee evangelism is about creating that conversation between your employees, your team, and the potential employees outside of the company. So it's about raising awareness about the company, but it's coming from our team directly. And with team, I don't mean just developers. I mean our entire product team. So developers, designers, UX researchers, product managers, it's everyone together. And rather than having a single uh, person be the employee evangelist, you want that entire team to contribute to this evangelism. And we basically want to make sure that this loop is happening. So we have other people on the team that take care of the hiring process. And I like to think that everyone on our team does awesome stuff. So my focus tends to be really on getting people to share that awesomeness with the community. And I've always seen it as a team role. 
So I'm not the only person in the company going out and speaking at all the events. I'm not the only person writing all the blog posts. This has been very much more about supporting our entire team to do all this and helping them learn the skills they need and helping create that type of environment that where everyone feels encouraged to contribute. So now that I've defined what I do, I want to have a look at what you can do to encourage and support your teams to practice this type of evangelism. So a couple months back, I read this really good book from Cafe Sierra, and it got mentioned yesterday in Heidi's talk already. And I think it's a great, great book. And in it, Cafe explains how the best way to get your product being used by people is understanding that it's not necessarily about your product. It's about making your users awesome. If your users feel that they are being badass when using your product, they'll be much more passionate and motivated to share what they can do with your product. So she goes on to create a framework of sorts to help your users become badass. And I realized that most of what she writes in there can be adapted to how we encourage our teams. So how can we make our teams badass? So I've adapted it specifically for getting your team to share more, but I think there's a lot that can be adapted to other matters as well. So I want to focus on these four areas, and I think all of these combined can help you encourage your team. Now, most of what I'll be talking about is phrased as encouraging your team, your colleagues, um, your employees, but a lot of it can also be applied to you individually. So if you don't work in a team or if you aren't yet in a position to change things for your entire team, just think about my tips as things that you can try to apply to yourself first. So first, give your team a compelling context. So this is about creating that right type of environment where people feel like they can share. Start with the company culture first. So let's go back to our strawberry example. So remember the packaging of that transparent box? The retailer could have put anything they wanted on there. So nutritional benefits, recipes, the claim that they're the best strawberries in the world. But in the end though, the only thing that really, really matters is whether or not they're good and tasty strawberries. Whether or not they're the type of strawberries that a person would buy again whether or not they're the type of strawberries that they, that person would tell their friends to go and buy. So the first thing about getting your team writing or talking about your company is having something that's worth talking about, something that's worth getting excited about. If you want potential employees to see what a great company it is to work at, then it kind of does need to be a good company to work at or at least have elements of goodness and greatness within it. And if there isn't a single thing that you can think of that is great, that is worth sharing with other people, then most probably you should be fixing that first. So the second thing is be authentic. So the stories that your team will tell need to come from them. You can't give them a script or a brief and just tell them to go and evangelize. It needs to have that human voice. And I love this quote from Cafe Sierra. So on their deathbed, nobody will say, if only I'd engage more with brands. <laughs> so remember, this is about employees starting conversations with potential employees. It's not the brand having these conversations. It's actual humans. So third, be open. Be willing to share information and data um, about your company. And not every company will be able to share everything, but you need to get a good understanding of what things your team can talk about and share, and make sure that the team is aware that they can. The second area that we need to look at is giving each person a compelling reason. And with this, I mean the personal motivations for each team member. So what will drive each of them to share what they do with others? So I'll give a couple of examples of what I think are the most common motivations. So one, helping others. So these are the people that share what they know because it will directly help someone else. 
They might not necessarily want to be the ones that are standing in the spotlight, but they know if they do, they can make someone's life easier. They can make someone's life better. And for them, you really need to frame it as, look, if you write this thing and share it, someone else will make, you will make someone else's life easier. So another note motivation is building confidence in communication. So most of our day-to-day -day work, we rely on communication to others. And doing a blog post or giving a talk or a workshop, these are kind of extreme examples on that spectrum. But becoming a better speaker or writer, it will help people in their jobs. And for some, this is the main reason why they will want to get better at it. So for them, you need to frame it as, look how awesome you were speaking or writing this thing. Now the third motivation is building personal reputation. And these are the people that want to stand in the spotlight and have the focus on them. They want to shine. And a variant of this are the people that want to be um, experts in a specific thing. So they want to show that they have mastered a specific topic. So in this case, it's all about look at this awesome thing that you do. So these aren't the only motivations that people have, but I think these are the most popular three, especially when it comes to getting your team to share what they do. And understanding which of these apply to each team member, it ties in with helping them actually build the skills that they need and understand and helps you understand what types of stories and problems that they want to share. So now that we know what their goal is, how do you encourage, um, how do you encourage them to actually keep wanting to work on this? And I think there are two sides to this. So first, what makes them stop? So you need to understand what each person's fears and blockers are. So I often hear things like this. I'm not an expert, I can't write, nothing I do is worth sharing, and they're all valid fears and reasons why someone will stop or why someone will never ever get started. But once you know what each individual's fears are, you can help them come up with a plan to overcome them. So the flip side of this is what pulls them forward. So make them set a goal, like speak at a conference in a year's time or write a blog post in a couple months time and help them then break it up in manageable chunks. So I haven't quite done this with my team yet, but I'm in the process of creating some progression paths, basically, for writing, speaking, and doing workshops. And the idea is that people can then just pick and choose a bit from these when they're setting their personal goals with their line managers. And finally, part of this is also lead by example. So make sure your team is not only aware of the things that you do, but also how you got there. So for, for instance, when I started this two years ago, I had never ever spoken at a conference before. And even now, I still get super nervous giving these talks. There are several people here in the audience that can attest to that. So I know the types of fears that my team are facing, because I've been there myself but constantly sharing with them what my journey has been and how I deal with my fears and nerves, it shows them that this is just as attainable for them as it was for me. If I can do it, so can they. So the final and largest area to look at is how to help your team actually get better. How do you help them improve these skills? So the first part of this is perpetual exposure. So this is the idea that to become better at something, to become an expert at something, you need to be exposed to high quality content of the things that you're trying to get better at. In this case of getting people to share things, it, you need to make sure that your team is being exposed to the good examples of other people sharing. So here are a couple of examples of things that we do. So to start, have a library. So this doesn't have to be just books, but also blog posts, articles, screencasts, videos, basically any content that you think is worth sharing with your team. So what are good examples of content that other people have created? 
And besides that, we also have lists of recommended material uh, for getting started with things like public speaking and writing. It's all about helping people get better. Another thing we organize is Talks We Love. So in this, we basically watch a recorded video of a talk um, with, so we watch a video of a talk together um, that one person on our team really enjoyed or found super useful. And we then have a discussion on things that we might want to um, change based on that video ourselves. Um, and again, it's about exposing good content. So yeah, expose good examples of sharing. The second thing is highlight existing good content. So our teams are already creating things um, that, are, that is worth sharing. So just think about really good commit messages or emails or Slack messages that are trying to explain a really tricky thing. Some of these things isn't just meant for the team. Some of this can be exposed to the outside world. And most of the time, it just requires someone pointing out to them, did you think about turning that into a blog post or into a talk or a workshop? So be that voice that champions the work that they're already doing. So the second part of this is helping your team get better. Um, sorry, the second part of helping your team get better is giving them the time and space to practice. So rather than throwing them in the deep end, you need to allow them to build these skills gradually. So I'll give three examples of ways that we support practice with speaking and then three examples of ways we support uh, practice with writing. So they're not the only things we do, they're just kind of a, to give you a sense of what type of things, um, uh, yeah, what type of things you should be thinking about. So the first speaking one we do is lightning talks. So these happen um, every four to six weeks and basically anyone within the company can give a quick five minute talk about anything they want. And it's a great way to get people to recognize that they have something worth talking about. And it gives them the experience and the confidence to do more talks. The second thing we organize is a weekly learning hour. And in these, one person on the team, they teach something that they think other people might find useful. So these tend to be much more hands-on and workshop-like. And they can be about anything. So we've had past learning hours be about command line tools, how to run retrospectives, and understanding database indexes better. So rather than learning to speak in front of a large audience, this is much more about practicing these skills in front of a smaller group of people that they're already familiar with. And then the third thing we do is conference club. So this is an internal meetup for everyone that wants to speak at conferences to get together and help each other with everything that goes into creating a conference talk. So coming up with talk ideas, helping with proposals, and giving feedback on practice runs. It's making sure that people aren't doing these things completely by themselves. So for practicing writing. So the first thing we organize are collaboration blog posts. So we pick a specific topic like women that inspire us or foreign words that we like, and we ask for paragraph submissions from the entire team. So rather than having to commit to a full length blog post, we get people started with writing small paragraphs. Another thing we have is our internal blog. So um, again, rather than having to publish something immediately for the entire world, we basically provide a stepping stone in between. And finally, we pair on blog posts as well. Lots of people pair on code, so why should we, shouldn't we do a similar thing when writing? Why aren't we trans transferring our skills with writing in this way as well? So a lot of what I do is sitting down with other people and trying to figure out what's the story they're trying to tell. Who's their target audience? How do you create an outline? And just helping them learn the skills that ne they need so that in the future they can write a full blog post themselves. So give your team the time and space to practice these new skills. And these won't grow overnight, and you need to create a supportive environment if you really want to get everyone involved. So if you want to get your team sharing more, I think these are the four areas that you need to look at. So give them a compelling context, give them a compelling reason, help them keep wanting to, 
and help them actually get better. So what was the effects of this on our team? So when I started, we barely had anyone writing blog posts or speaking at events. So here are some stats of where we got now. So not including the people that joined our team recently, about 35% of our team have done an external talk. That percentage rises to 60% when we include our lightning talks and to 78% when we include our learning hours. With blog posts, we got 75% of our team that have written full length blog posts and 89% when we include the collaboration blog posts. And what this means though, is that if we combine this all, the really awesome thing is that everyone in our team is sharing their knowledge in some way. Now tying it back to the title of this talk, so from the last round of hiring, 50% of our interviewees explicitly mentioned having seen a talk or reading a blog post. And this wasn't us asking them if they had. This is the percentage of people that brought it up themselves in their conversations with us. So the actual number might even be higher. So make your team badass. And if there's one thing you take away from this talk, let it be this. Every team can do this. But more importantly, I think every team should do this. So while I think employee evangelism is great for your company, in the end, it's all about making our community great. Embedding these type of practices within every company, it basically means that we get more people sharing what they do and sharing what they love. Also, if we want to see more diverse speakers at events, if we want to see more diverse writers share their stories, we need to support everyone to learn these skills. And as tech leads, we are in positions to change that. So I want you all to think about this. The next time you come across something that one of your colleagues has done that could help someone else, help them share that with the world. And maybe next year, thanks to you, they will be somewhere on the stage sharing that story and trying to make the community better. So thanks for listening. <laughs>